Jensen Huang said they might place orders with Intel's foundry services to reduce over-reliance on TSMC. As NVIDIA and Intel are competitors in many areas, do you think such a collaboration would be successful? The short answer is yes. Let me just say that I've known Jensen Huang and Pat Gelsinger for over 20 years. I'm proud to say I consider them friends. And um, I am constantly surprised and delighted by their courage and their vision and their rule breaking. That's an important part. They are willing to break the rules. And Pat will not pass up an opportunity to keep the fabs at Intel running. And so if he can get customers from the outside to keep the fabs running, he'll do that. And he'll be aggressively pursuing such customers. He's not religious about who his customer is. And he has no problem with selling parts to NVIDIA or AMD or Qualcomm or anybody else. Jensen is a master at semiconductors. There's few people who understand semiconductor and the semiconductor business better than he does. And he'll get chips wherever he can find a fab that meets his quality standards and his production demands. My advice is expect the unexpected from these titans. They will continue to surprise you. Every time you poke at them, they'll trick you. (laughs) <laughs> just as an illustration of Intel's flexibility. About three years ago, Intel was buying AMD GPUs and putting them in their CPUs. I don't know if you know that or not. In fact, they just stopped that product about six months ago. So the fact that AMD, that Intel would buy AMD parts and use them and put them in the front is an illustration and demonstration of the flexibility these companies have towards each other. Yes, they're competitors. They also turn out to be very good friends, by the way. There's no animosity there. They respect each other quite a bit. What are the new challenges for NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel's GPU or DGPU competition in the context of CPU slash GPU heterogeneous combination? GPUs are everywhere. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. You can hardly find an electronic device that does not have a GPU in it. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they're putting them in cars, in buses, airplanes, boats, ships, smartphones, PCs, servers, supercomputers, game consoles, hyperscalers. I mean, they're just, they're literally everywhere. And all those platforms that I just named, all three companies, I refer to them as AIN, AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA, all those companies serve all those markets somewhere one place or another. But with all those different platforms I mentioned, not one size GPU can satisfy all of them. So you can't one size does all. Smartphones, for example, want to have very, very little power used. AMD is in smartphones. Supercomputers, don't care about power consumption. They just want the most performance that they can possibly get and so forth. And so you have all these trade-offs, a good design that can scale to meet the various application needs, the various platform needs. The other thing I'd like to point out is that these companies, AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA, these are super processor companies. There is no other companies in the universe like these three. They just are so far ahead of everybody. They are building the state of the state of the state of the art processors. It's just, when you stop to think about it, just to give you some crazy numbers, NVIDIA just announced a new GPU. It's got 53 billion transistors in it. And those transistors are six nanometers. Six nanometers, you couldn't find six nanometers inside a virus. That's how tiny it is. And that's science fiction. If you try to describe that to somebody, you can't because there's nothing you can compare it to. And they're pumping these things out. Hundreds of thousands of them every week. And they're coming out and they work. We're using them right now. So don't underestimate these companies. And also, let me caution you. Don't judge them or try to report on them like you would a football game. It's not a question of one wins and the other one loses and game over. It doesn't work that way. They'll shift market shares every quarter in one segment or another. That's normal. One of them will get a little bit ahead on technology or one of them get ahead on production or maybe they'll do something on price. So that'll shift from quarter to quarter. But take the big picture, 20 years. In 20 years, those three companies have done nothing but grow. 
and keep delivering new and amazing products. They've never stopped introducing leading edge technology and delighting their customers. No one, no one disappeared. No one lost the game, went home with a broken leg, and Denver came back again. They're in this for the long haul. They've made enormous billions of dollars of investments. That just doesn't go away.